Hey, this is Mr. Barr, and this is the review of numbers. So let's get our notes ready to go. Here we go, bringing my notebook over here. Where is it? Right about there, and we'll start with numbers. And we're going to do a little tree map here with types of numbers. So if you wanted to go horizontal with this, you could. So types of numbers. Bring my page a little bit over. There we go. And there are two types of numbers that we're dealing with. We're dealing with rationals and irrational. Although I have it written as ration, ah, whatever that word is. Okay, we'll write what I write. Irrational and rational. Those are the two types of numbers that we're trying to differentiate. I want to be able to look at a number and know if it's rational or irrational. Irrationals are going to possibly contain pi. Irrationals might contain the square root of a non-perfect square. and decimals that go on forever. So that's how I identify an irrational. If I see a pi, I know it's irrational. If I see a square root of a non-perfect square, like the square root of 17 or the square root of 19, then I know it's irrational. And if I see a decimal that goes on forever without repeating, without repeating, let me put that there. Then I also know that it's irrational. So how do I identify rationals? Well, rationals are everything else. everything else. So if it's not over here, well then I know it's rational. So let's do some examples of this. Square root of 16. Well square root of 16 is a square root that I do know. The square root of 16, remember, these are the things right here. Let me put a little, over, a little bit closer. Does it contain pi? No. Is it a square root of a non-perfect square? No, it's a square root that I know. I know the square root of 16 is 4. Is it a decimal that goes on forever? No. So what is this? This is rational. Square root of 38. Is it, does it contain pi? No. Is it a square root of a non-perfect square? Yes. This is a square root that I don't know, which means it's irrational. And if you put that into a cal calculator, you get a decimal that doesn't repeat, that goes on forever without repeating. Five, well that's rational. Pi, it contains pi, and it's rash, irrational, it's rash, irrational. This, okay, eight, that's fine. Square root of four is just two, this is eight over two, which is four, which, does it contain pi? No. Is it a square root of a non-perfect square? No. 
Is it a decimal that goes on forever? No. So what is it? It's rational. And this is a decimal that goes on forever. This is irrational. Here are all the wonderful square roots, and we need to know all of these and put them in our notebook. So here we go with the square roots. Getting my notebook ready to go. Coming over to you guys. Notebook, do some square roots. All of these need to make it into your notebook. with a marker that's better than that one. Okay, square root of one equals one. Square root of four equals two. Square root of nine equals three. Square root of 16 equals four. Square root of 25 equals five. Square root of 36 equals six. Square root of 49 equals 7. Square root of 64 equals 8. Why? Because 8 times 8 is 64. 7 times 7 is 49. 6 times 6 is 36. And let's go with some other ones over here. Square root of 81 equals 9. Square root of 100 equals 10. Square root of 121 equals 11. Square root of 144 equals 12. Square root of 169 equals 13. Square root of, what am I, 196 equals 14. Square root of 225 equals 15. And the square root of 256 equals 16. These need to make it into your notes. And more importantly, they should probably live inside your brain. You should know the square roots up to yeah, probably 256. Up to 400 would be better, but I'll accept 256. What we're going to do now is we're going to approximate a square root. So this is the square root neighborhood. These are the numbers in your neighborhood, in your neighborhood. But we're going to estimate the value of the square root of 30. And this is going to be a flow map. Here we go for the flow map that goes with this. We're going to call this how to estimate a square root. And we'll do it with the square root of 30. Oh, you can't see what I'm writing. How to estimate a square root, and we'll do it with the square root of 30. First thing we're going to do is we're going to find the neighbors above and below. So the square root of 30 fits in right about here. So the neighbor above is 25, the neighbor below is 36. Square root of 25, square root of 30, square root of 36. I know 25 is 5, I know 36 is 6. So find the neighbors above and below. Is the number closer to the top number or is it closer to the bottom number or is it in the middle?
And I think 30 is pretty much in the middle between 25 and 30. It's, it's middle, isn't it? If it was 26, I'd say it's close to the top number. If it's 35, I'd say it's closer to the bottom number. And now we're going to estimate. And our estimates, a top would be maybe a 0.1 or a 0.2. A middle would be about a 0.5. And a bottom would be about a 0.8 or 0.9. So I think this is right in the middle, so it's going to be about a 5.5. If I was doing 26, I'd say it's probably like a 5.1. If it's a 35, I'd say it's like a 5.9. So let's do another estimate here. 65. Square root of 65. Let's find his neighbors. There's his neighborhood. And is he closer to the top, the bottom, or the middle? Well, he's closer to the number above him. Which means it's going to be about, I don't know, what do you think? About an 8.1? It's just a little bit bigger than 8. So the square root is 8.1. Let's estimate the value of the square root of 99. Well, let's find his neighbors. 81, 99, 100. Square root of 81 is 9. Square root of 100 is 10. Man, this is all, is he closer to the top number or the bottom number or the middle? Well, he's closer to the bottom. And if I look at my notes, bottoms would be like a 0.8 or a 0.9. Well, this is almost to 10, so I'm going to put it at 9.9. .9. That's a good estimate for the square root of 99. Excellent. Thank you for watching. Have a good day, and I will see you in class.